Hi guys, welcome to back to what I like to call Cracks in the Cloisters. As hopefully those who see this channel know, I am Father Demetrius Thomas. I am a Benedictine monk and a Catholic priest living in New Jersey. I am joined today with one of our juniors, Brother William McMillan. And Brother William has recently learned the joys of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> If you can't tell on the video, he has a little discoloration under his right eye. <laughs> That's because somebody, um, some blue belt might be very bad at Uchimara. <laughs> so what we thought we'd do today is because being that we both teach freshmen and sophomores and high school students, we have found that they really like the idea of monks and jiu-jitsu. So if technology cooperates, what we hope to do is just do a little breakdown of some of our rules, some of our time on the mats. Now, I'm a blue belt, so I'm not an expert. I am a blue belt under Bill Wazilik, who's a black belt under Jamie Cruz. And Bill has what now? Maybe a month? Yeah, I think well, probably like, I don't know, 10, 10 to 12 sessions, something like that. Yeah, yeah. so like 10 to 12 classes. Yeah. Um, so what we'll see here set up the clip is some positional stuff which is always good to start with and then also just some of our rules i will purposely be trying to feed him certain things um, to see if he remembers what i know he's been taught it's one advantage of my experience is that i've been to every class he's been to so i have a rough idea in my head of what he should at least have in mind i want to clarify your point about the the uh our students liking jujitsu. I think it could be anything, any sport in which we beat the crap out of each other and they would, they would enjoy that. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> which, um, if the kids are watching this, maybe if you see this video, you should give it a like and put in the comments or something, something. Because, you know, every year we do crazy fundraising things for Spirit Week. Just a thought. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure, like my beard, in the old days to get it shaved, it would require a hefty bounty. Oh, yes. Uh, if I'm going to get my uh, my butt kicked in front of uh, 600 people, I want I want to raise some money for that. I'm sure we <laughs> could come up with a rule set to sort of even the playing field. <laughs> so hopefully things don't freeze up here. We're going to start playing the video clip. And what we'll do is we'll just talk a little bit as we watch it. So if you see us looking off to the screen, that's what we're doing. Um, again, it's just going to be a little rambly, but figured people might like to know what we were thinking, what we were doing. Um, because yeah, who doesn't want to watch two monks fight each other? I mean, come on. It's good television. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's worth the clicks. <laughs> This is where the trash talking happens, just beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think what we're doing here is trying to determine a rule set, aren't we? I think this rule set starts out with some positional stuff. Um, we drilled some escapes and some attacks from guard that day because Will wanted to have a few more things in his arsenal. Uh, so we definitely... Again, we're, we're discussing, and I can already see we're, we're, we're having some uh, issues here. So let's try something a little different then. Let's, let's try it a different way. And we're back. Uh, we checked the footage, and even though what we're seeing is a little glitchy, it seems like it's working fine on the recording end. So we're going to go with it. Uh, turns out we were actually wrong. Um, we don't start from guard. Um, yeah, you'll see here a couple good things I, th I think will be fun to point out. Uh, there's a saying in uh, jiu-jitsu, a way to make sure everybody knows what page they're on, where they're supposed to be. And that's slap, tap, simulate murder. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, we started with that. We started with the slap fist bump that way everybody knows it's good to go right we're fighting for takedowns uh this trying to get grips as we say in the business yeah 
trying to remember what I was planning to do, what I wanted I went, to do that. Day. I went for the knee there. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get it in early. There's no ref, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah, that's one <laughs> great thing I got to admit with my coach. Um, him being a wonderful Polish Catholic and me being a priest, uh, I've had keys since I was like a one stripe white belt to the gym, and I'm allowed to go whatever. Um, so there I'm sort of playing guard a little bit, a little, like, I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest, from here. Looks like I'm trying to pull him into half guard. Oh, was this the day we covered Scorpion? Am I trying to, like, force you to do a Scorpion escape? Mm. I don't know. I rarely know what's going on when I'm rolling. Oh. I'm just kind of <laughs> moving my limbs. And that's fine. <laughs> Actually, this is one thing Will is really good at. He's... Once he gets the technique down, he's going to be destructive with that guillotine choke. Uh, if you can tell, I, I have to pause a little bit. I, I'm, I'm actually in danger. I'm in legit danger. I was able to get out of it and pull him to guard. Uh, now I'm going to start. I don't know what I'm going to start to do. Probably start an attack or a sweep. Um, he does know how to escape guard. We've covered like three escapes. Execution's another story. <laughs> I know intellectually how to do it. Uh, so there you see a messed up scissor sweep on my part. I didn't pull him onto my leg, so he was easy able to counter that, which was good. For a triangle? Uh, yeah, I went for a yeah. triangle. Or I might have been trying to hit that double arm bar. I've been really liking a, like a, almost like an Eddie Bravo Dead Orchard. Uh, me and Bo, our coach, worked it a little bit. And I hit it on him, not live, but in training. So since then, I've been trying to go for a double arm bar chance I get. Just had another tool of the arsenal. <laughs> um, as you can tell, like, I'm, I'm definitely holding a lot. I'm not, like, transitioning. You know, I'm, I'm trying to force him hey, into certain positions. I got it. Did you, yeah. give me, did you give me that or I actually get it? Hard to say, maybe half and uh, half. I think half and <laughs> half. Yeah, it's, it's a legit side control. Um, thing, though, with side control, I know he only knows Kimura Keylock from there because I taught him Kimura Keylock. So, you know, I'm coming up, I come into him, come in, not sure what I'm going for here. Oh, I'm going to counter what he did, I'm going for his arm. Trying to hit that key lock or Kimura, or Kimura looks like. Oh, no, I went to mount. Oh, I'm going to choke you, aren't I? Oh no, armbar. Oh, this is the one you defended pretty good. Yeah. But you didn't come up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Bill, I will say, uh, Brother Will has really good uh, body instinct, at least for a new guy. So he he's really good at knowing when he's in danger. Yes. Which is good. He just needs to learn what to do and what not to do in that situation. Like there, he beat the armbar. I think able. that's an Irish thing. We recognize pain and know how to handle it right away. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a Catholic thing. Okay, yeah. Well, actually, I'm only 6% Irish, so maybe it's a Scottish thing. Oh. Yeah. So now you see a common thing that happens in Jiu Jitsu with, when you roll gi, which is belts become a nightmare. And yeah. We don't have a ref or other people in the room right now to sort of rip it away from us. You know, that was one of the interesting things about learning Jiu Jitsu is that, you know, I, I didn't know that you could sort of use the gi and the belt in, in, in ways that, you know, I found out that you could, you know, like, oh yeah you know, literally choking the guy with his own lapel and all this kind of stuff. And... Speaking of which, <laughs> oh, no, armbar. Uh, I really wanted that armbar that day. Uh, but yeah, no, that's one of the things that makes gi versus no gi so different is just the jacket. Like, you can grab fabric, you, you can pin, you can control, you can, you can strangle the bejesus out of people. And it's, you know, it's brutal. I really, what I should be doing here, like you said, is getting up yep. and turning towards you to try to mitigate the... Yep, protect that arm yeah. and then kip up and come in. Yep, definitely want to kip up and come in there. I think that was a tie that round. No? It was, <laughs> it was you know, it was a good round. Now we're talking about something. Uh, I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, we're just starting. We're just going from, from the ground. I love that cross-collar grip. Buddy of mine, a black belt down at Kurt Pellegrino's, uh, Joe Mariano. 
showed me a bunch of stuff from Cross Collar over the summer. Because with lockdown, you could only train with very small privates. Um, so it was awesome. There, um, I I know I've showed Will, I think by this point, the uh, elevator sweep. So I think I'm trying to give him a little bit of chance to work it. And my right hand there should really be the other way, like that. I yep. think you pointed that out. There. Yep. And, you know, one of the interesting things I'm learning, you know, about guard is that I don't know how much we talked about it, but it's not only having your legs around the guy and cross, but the position on his back. Right? Yep. You don't want it to be too high up around his neck. You don't want to be a too low, like, you know, around his belt, you know. High has its purpose. Like, yeah. don't get I mean, me wrong. It, yeah. like, 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 before you go for an arm bar, you, you definitely want to get high up on their shoulders. Good, um, yeah. But, yeah, you want to sprawl the back. Always because you want to control the hips. You want to have you know John Donner, wonderful jiu-jitsu guy who Bill also has recently fell in love with because you know who doesn't love Donner? I mean, he's a philosopher who can jack you up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's one thing like you know he'll always he talks about it about how you know guard your hips even in your bottom, you know your hips are on top of the other guy, and in jiu-jitsu whoever's hips are on top has the advantage. Right, exactly, and you know that's that's been one of the one of the many interesting things I've learned picking this up is you know if you're if you've never been exposed to jiu-jitsu before or martial arts you know I before before I started here I had no no experience you know I was a baseball player growing up I played baseball and golf and mm-hmm. a little bit of basketball and like pick up football and stuff but um, never never did any martial arts and you really don't know how much goes into it until you start doing it you know it looks like oh they're just you know grabbing them and taking them down and then mm-hmm. choking them out or you know whatever um, but it, 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 there's so many sort of little micro decisions that you make that mm-hmm. that uh, really um, decide the outcome of the match. You know. Yeah, I can't remember if it's in this series or it was definitely recently. We we got like double collar ties on each other and basically got into like a sumo push. And afterwards, I, I know I looked at you like, dude, when, when I'm pushing into you like that, pull, pull, yeah, you know, yank me down, that, sort of like that, like just saw there. And that's the, that's the other thing. It's, you know, so much of it is about uh, balance, you know, leverage. Oh, you flipped me here. Yep, yep. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, the students enjoyed that one. Yeah. But yeah, but that was a good spin there. You came around, you hit guard, you come across a little bit. You guys can't see because Demetrius is off screen, but he's actually crying right now. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, actually, let's... Uh, Let's see what do you do. You scoot in. No, he's gonna scoot off. So let's um, take this opportunity. We'll fast forward a little bit. Yeah, we should be back and good. So if you notice here, actually, I I get a scorpion on him. So a lockdown. And I think this this was the week before we uh, we learned scorpion escape, or I learned scorpion escape. Uh, might be. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then, uh, which is not that complex. Right. And one of the problems with me, I know I shouldn't hit that on somebody who doesn't know escape because it's, it's it's just brutal, but it is sort of one of my go-tos. I am definitely a deep half scorpion guy. I love it. Um, in fact, I take after one of our coworkers' husbands in that, Derek. He's a black belt, also under Jimmy Cruz. Loves half guard, loves scorpion, which is why I'm always so happy when I catch it on my coach because my coach has trained with Derek for years, and Derek loves it. So, like, you know, if I can still catch it on him, like, I'm, I'm happy. Here, uh, I think we're taking a little break. I'm going to restart. I'm going to start from down. Um, you know, obviously in a real fight, you'd always start standing up, but also in a real fight, you're not going to have a jacket. But, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I do know from personal experience, you can use, especially like a Carhartt jacket. Oh, yeah. You know, I, it's not I, that far off. Me and a buddy a couple years ago, before the pandemic hit, actually, we shot a couple videos using a Carhartt jacket and uh, Spider Guard. So where you grab the sleeves and like you're, you're there playing it. Um, and it held up good. Am I the only guy that wears a gi to a bar? Or are you guys ever doing that? Well, Hayabusa does make a hoodie made out of gi material. <laughs> I thought about buying it, but then I invested in that quick flip hoodie. That's the raincoat that turns into a backpack. Awesome plug, by the way. Henry Gracie, um, who runs Gracie University and stuff like that. Awesome black belt, awesome jiu-jitsu guy of the Gracie family. He came up with this really cool, um, Hoodies that turn into actual functional drawstring backpacks. Now, this position is called north-south. 
Well, yeah, oh, yeah. this is the one where I go you're, for that messed up Kimura. You're really off to the side, but... Yeah, so we started there. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. Because that's actually really cool. I'm going to pause and uh, not pause the video, but pause the stream and come back. This is a cool move, actually. Um, a buddy of mine, T, Tiago, brought back from Brazil. So you go from Kessa into north-south, and... You force the hands around you, and then you come heavy on their chest. And when you come up, you bring your one leg over, whatever leg is closest to them, you bring it over, holding their their other arm across your belly, and it lets you lock uh, like a Kimura Americana right there. It gives you a shoulder lock from north-south. And if the guy grabs your belly, like a lot of people do, it just sets up that, uh, that technique. So it's awesome this guy that doesn't know what, what's happening with north south doesn't know like to do a push escape or something like that um here we start standing up again yeah i'm realizing a lot of this i'm doing nothing with my legs on the ground mm -hmm. which is and your legs are your best weapon right you know and you know one one interesting thing about another interesting thing learning this is you know there at least for me there were so many kinds of movements that I ra rarely would make with my body. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it was not intuitive to me, and it's something I really had to had to concentrate on and learn. Yeah, that's one thing. You know, with any wrestling, any jujitsu, judo, anything like the the nuance, just the fine line stuff is just ridiculous. Like how just the difference of a millimeter here or there. Or, in a half second, getting to the position, you know, before the other guy. Yeah. It's also very tiring. Oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> uh, I was telling Will last night, I showed up, and I usually help out a uki for a children's class, and uh, I showed up, and uh, no kids showed up. So me and my coach just started rolling, no timer. We drilled a little bit. We drilled a, a fun little uh, uh, modified baseball bat choke, which is awesome for Nogi. And then uh, we just started rolling. And we started rolling around, what did I say, 5.30, 5.35, somewhere mm -hmm. there. And we finished up around 7. Again, just, just rolling to sub, which, you know, with him all the time. But, you know, I was, he wanted me to work us on, uh, as you see here, I hold a lot. So he had me, you know, no, no, transition, transition. Don't get stuck. Just transition. Don't matter if you lose position. Go, 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 go. And uh, apparently I made some good progress, so. It's good. I always love, it's one thing like COVID has jacked us up a lot, but I ain't going to lie. I love the, the privates that just come with cost of admission. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So here. I think you got my. I'm working butterfly. I'm doing yeah. a butterfly pass. You got my other. Yeah, because you were there for that butterfly. Remember, I think the Saturday before this is when Bo showed us the butterfly? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to force it. I step over. Again, a little wide, but, uh, you know, working here. I'm trying to get him to work. I'm trying to... Uh, Will has a good escape from mount, which is um, the post and then push. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to set it up for him. Ah, uh, right now I'm going for a choke. I got the choke. Yeah. I went sort of, sort of like a modified Ezekiel choke there um, with the gi where you, you, know, you grab and you pop in. Uh, now I'm sitting in shame <laughs> and uh, <laughs> wondering if I should uh, keep paying the monthly fee to stay here. Mm. Well, I hope you keep coming. Uh, so the way we do our rules, if you haven't picked up from the video yet, is um, we tend to set, for adults at least at, at my club, um, ball quest jiu-jitsu anyway, uh, a five-minute timer, and then we usually do 30 seconds to a minute in between just to give you a little bit of rest, get a cup of water, fix your belt, fix your skirt on your uh, on your jacket, etc. Um, that looks like your bigger gi. That is. Yeah. That is my uh, Adidas. Yeah. So... One of the awesome things with jiu-jitsu is you work like a dog. Um, and in the past probably two years, I've went from like 270 to like 210. So I have a variety of geese. I have everything from, I had originally an A6. I'm now in an A3. Um, but as anybody who does jiu-jitsu knows, like, it's just like buying any type of pants. Different makers, different sizes. 
So even though that's an A3, it's actually bigger than an A3H I have. But that's my Adidas. Ooh. Oh, yeah, good, good, good scramble there. I went for a choke and uh, pulled out. Working on knee shield, it looks like. Maybe half guard. What, did we freeze there on the video? No, I think we're... Oh, yeah, we did. Camera froze. Let's uh, pause here. So we had a little technical problem there. Had a sort of restart. Let's restart. So, again, I'm working a half guard there. Um, try to come up, try to sweep him over. Uh, but, yeah, he's actually working. I think you're working my arm there, trying to go for a choke. Too. I'm most comfortable near a window, as you can tell. It's a quick escape at the window. Oh, is that why you, <laughs> in your, what, first day you threw into it? Uh, yeah, I was trying to get out of something, and I uh, kind of hit the window and broke a bunch of the blinds. Yeah, if you can't tell, it was that window there. Like, you can see the blinds are a little messed up. That was my buddy Will, boy. When you're as powerful as I am, it's tough to contain that, you know. Hard. <laughs> Indeed. But, yeah. So, again, he's going for a move. He's working. Uh, bring him up. Try to go for the, the leg. Yeah. And then I learned, you know, when, when he gets your ankle, come up. Climb, climb up him. Yep. So he's... This comes up. Come up into him. You can subtitle this video "Holding On for Dear Life" because that's basically what I'm doing the whole time. Yeah, but again, <laughs> you know, you're recognizing points of danger. You're recognizing times to grip. I'm like, no, <laughs> which is you know always helpful. Yeah, I definitely want to. Yeah, right. Start, start using my legs more like this. Yeah, if you knew like. X guard, De La Hiva guard, some of the stuff that uses like single leg guards. I mean, that's what we'll have to cover this like Sunday or something. Uh, cause that's one thing me and Will do. Like we train with groups, group days, but then uh, Sundays, Mondays, days we don't teach, etc. Um, because our mass schedule, etc., are, are weird. We we try to find at least one two days a week to go ourselves to just drill. Yeah. Which is awesome. Again, it's one of the great things about. Having a coach who uh, trusts me with keys to the place. Yeah. And trusts that I'm not going to jack stuff up. Yep. And more importantly, that I'm going to clean up afterwards and wipe stuff down. So here I go side. I think you don't know what happened there. I think that's when you tap just because of pressure. Like, oh, yeah. You were gassed. Yeah. Because we're not at the end yet. We're, we're definitely getting there. I'm looking at the clock. Again, we always, when you reset with jiu-jitsu, you know, you always tap, slap, and go. I mean, at least in places I've trained. That, that like, trying to, like, basically hop onto you came from a video I saw of, uh, it was actually a, a women's tournament, and they, it was, you know, right when they started. Mm -hmm. And the one, one, of the women kind of went down like she was going to go from like a single leg mm -hmm. and the other woman timed it perfectly where she just kind of like frogger hopped at her yep and was was went right into mount and that's what i was trying to do there yeah that can be you know dangerous so like donner will say like uncontrolled body weight is how people get hurt right exactly so like here just will's look at my eyes yeah exactly <laughs> here it looks like will's going for the leg um what he doesn't know is that my right ankle is untappable with a straight ankle attack um, due to my AFL ligament being completely ripped, I believe three times over the years, um, before I joined the Abbey, I did judo and jiu-jitsu and stuff at, um, a club in Pittsburgh, and it just got wrecked repeatedly. It's, it's pure scar tissue. Um, black belts can lock a straight ankle, and unless they turn it into a toe hold, I don't tap. I mean, one day it's just gonna snap, but... Oh, so you're cheating. Well, you know. You have a medical advantage. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like the jiu-jitsu, um... Equivalent of steroids. Yeah. <laughs> I've used it before. I've goaded new people. I, I show them my right ankle. I let them go for it knowing that they'll usually leave their legs exposed. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, oh, I have his. I'll tap him before he can tap me. And he's just like, yeah. 
And, that, and, that, and that's another interesting thing about the sport is that anything can be used for an advantage. You yep. Know? I mean, short of like, you know, poking the guy's eyes out or something. But. Yeah, fish hooking, oil checking, which is when you... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously stuff like that, no-nos. Like, pretty much, if it's going to cripple a guy, don't do it. Yeah. And there's definitely stuff you would do more in a tournament or when there's money on the line versus when, um, you know, you're with a friend. Because, like, you would, you know, you would never want to just jack a buddy up. So, like, even, like, with, like, if you have a guy's back and you're going for, like, an RNC or something like that, a rear naked choke or something like that where you got to fish the one hand across, you know, in a tournament, you might take your knuckle and just drive it into the throat so they want to lift their chin up so you can just slip underneath. Or you might just catch their chin and just crank the bejesus out of their chin. Mm-hmm. But doing that with a training partner, is, like, that you train with every day is kind of a... yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't want to say what word because I know my kids are gonna watch this and the, you know, the uh, the the freshmen will see this. So I, I don't want to use what word, but I'm sure everybody knows what word I would use to describe <laughs> an individual who does that. Um, a jerk head. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, a poopy hit. <laughs> he would be a poopy hit. Now this is, I think, you massaging my foot. Here, I think I'm showing <laughs> you like a something with a straight ankle, or or maybe I'm showing you. Oh yeah, I think you're. You might be showing me how to get the ankle, maybe. Maybe, because I think you were going for it without knowing the move or something yeah. at this point. Again, this is one of the problems. Like, I don't know where this role falls in his like pedigree. I have the date, but I don't know. I think it's this is the second one that we recorded. Yeah. 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 See, so, yeah, I'm definitely showing him straight ankle. Because now I'm going to let him go for it. Yeah. So he's, he's trying for that straight ankle. That's where I'm probably going to tell him too. Like your, your defense is to pull up, get up. Don't let him take it. Um, one reason I am showing him on that side too is because one, that's my untappable side. But also um, back in like September, like we're recording this in February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In September, I tried a scissor sweep on a guy, um, another white belt. He moved in a way I was not expecting, and my ankle was not ready. So my left ankle took all my weight driving into it and all the other guys, and just, I mean, searing, insane pain. Um, so I'm still baby that side. Like, I mean, I tap easy on that side. Just like my one elbow, because I was fighting an armbar. Bo got me in it, but I'd already kicked up, and I, I was standing. Like, I was on my feet. I'm like, I'm going to slip this at him. Just barely on his hips. And I got a shrug and just, nope, should have tapped long before. Yeah, that. yeah, that, that, I think that's another uh, important thing for people who are just starting to know. It's like, don't don't try to be the tough guy when it comes to, you know, not tapping. Because that, you'll just get yourself injured. Just as soon as you start to feel that twinge, that's when, you know, or maybe even just before that. Yeah, again. You, you, can, you can kind of feel it. You can feel the right time to say it. Exactly. And yeah. again, training, you want to tap early, tap soon so you don't get hurt. Obviously, like, if money's on the line, if it's your living, if it's a tournament, if it's a pro fight, something like that. You know, I, I've seen people, you know, there's a great fight with uh, Eddie Bravo and one of the Gracies at Metamorphosis where, like, even Eddie looked at him and was like, dude, are you seriously not going to tap? He's like, no, it's like 30 seconds left. I ain't tapping to this. You ain't going to cripple me. Or uh, one of the Meow brothers at a tournament, I believe in New York City at an IBJJF tournament. You know, he was only up by advantage point. Like, he wasn't even up on points. He was just up by the advantage score. And he got caught, I think, a heel hook and just let the dude just crank on his knee because he, he he knew if he just put up with the pain for a few seconds, he'd win. Mm -hmm. um, and so he did. Not recommending that in <laughs> any way, shape, or form. Again, tap early, tap quickly. Um, Jiu-Jitsu is about being comfortable with pain. I mean, as Will will say, you definitely... Um, have to become used to being sore. Yeah. I mean, I've... Even some small stuff, like your your fingers will get sore, your wrists will get super sore. You know, especially if you're not used to playing a sport where, you know, you're... Well, I mean, I don't know if there's any analog to, like, to, like, gripping a guy's gi and, and kind of, you know, trying to move him around, you know, but uh, in other sports, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm 
in football is tackling, and you know, you don't really. I mean, you can grab a guy's jersey and kind of whip him down, but it's 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 not quite the same as a lot of these very um, uh, unique movements that you make that you don't make in other sports. Oh yeah, yeah. like like I remember first time I learned spider guard, and when you learned it, like you. Your knuckles get twerked. So spider guard is if you grab a guy's sleeve. Now there's ways you use your legs too, but you basically grab it and you rip around so that you're never inside because if he turns his hand, then it breaks my fingers mm -hmm. easily. Um, so you, you grab it and cup it. I don't know if you guys can see that on the film, but like it just twerks your, your upper knuckles. Your upper knuckles aren't used to just being pulled apart by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, look at... The Meow Brothers' hands. BJJ, Meow, hands. Like, you'll see what it does to your knuckles. They calcify, they, they inflame. But it is effective. And again, like uh, me and my buddy Brian showed, you can you can do that with certain fabric. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you are, you will get sore. It, well, I mean, at least the first bunch of times I went, I came home, I was just super sore. And, and But what's interesting is like, you get really sore, and then like the next day, it's like nothing happened. Yep. At least that's 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 how it was for me, you know. But I think you know if you're if you're just starting out or you're thinking about trying it, that that's something that you you should know going in that it's extremely tiring, especially if you're not in shape. Like you know, I'm not in, in great shape, and uh, you're gonna get you know sore because you're gonna be using muscles that you don't normally use. Yeah, like I said to Will, you know, after my first class, I literally threw up. In fact, me and my coach were talking about that this week, about how far I've come again because we rolled over an hour. Just mm -hmm. rolling, basically. Um, and, you know, this is post-COVID, all, all that, too. So, you know, but even he put on, it's like, yeah, it's like, I was definitely afraid, like, you were either, A, not going to stick it out, or B, that you were just going to drop over dead of a heart attack. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Is, is, that kind of, is that kind of as a win, if your opponent dies of a heart attack? And that counts as a loss. <laughs> yeah. It's not like ancient Greece, where, uh, actually, there's a funny story. So ancient Greece used to have a, a pancreation event. So you you were allowed to use submission wrestling or punching in it. So pancreation, all you know, all fight. And there was a dude who actually he's known for having won because the other guy quit, but in doing the move that like twerked, it was sort of like a, I think a, the reports say it like the like the accounts that it was kind of like a modified heel hook on the guy, and it like twerked his leg in a way that caused him to submit. But in going for the move, the dude snapped his own neck. <laughs> so the winner that year's of that year's Olympics, because he didn't submit, was the dead dude. Because uh, it was like a like, how tough are you type well that, mentality. That's a way to go out. You bust the guy's leg and then you just, that's it. What's a cooler way to go out than that? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean. Again, I would say with jiu-jitsu, one thing I, I, I especially love about it is two main things. One, we live, especially compared to even a lot of other parts of the world here in the U.S., we, we live in a very comfortable society. You know, I mean, heck, I got, a, I got a device on my bed called a chili pad, which lets me control the temperature of my mattress on a <laughs> schedule. Like, my phone will make it hot, cold, warm. You know, like, it's awesome. But let's not, that's like hyper luxury. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, thank you, mommy. Because <laughs> um, it does help me sleep and it helps me wake up in the morning. Because I, I make it so it's too cold for me to go back to bed when, when that alarm goes mm -hmm. off. That way, uh, Father Pryor doesn't uh, come knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with jujitsu, you have to learn how to be uncomfortable. Yes. Either with pressure, I mean, think about some of the passes, like some butterfly passes, stuff like that, you're literally driving all your weight, all your shoulder into the guy's belly. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in the bottom position or, you know, you're fighting a technique, you, you have to learn to just deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's, that's what I enjoy about it is, of course, it's a physical sport because you're trying to submit the other guy. But it's also a mental sport, both in the sense of you're thinking about what your opponent is going to do or, you know, a few steps ahead. But... You also you also have to sort of control your own mind. Right? Yep. If, you, if if there's a guy with a knee on your chest and you get super anxious, things aren't going to go well. But if you're kind of, you know, calm, cool, calm, and collected, and uh, you, you know you you know how to get out of it, you know, it, it'll be a different story. Exactly, and that's one of the other things that I especially love. Again, I work as a teacher. I work as a parish priest on the weekends. I live with 
what are we down to now? Like 21 guys in the house? Something like that, yeah. You know, I live with 21 other guys. Jiu-Jitsu forces me, literally forces me to clear my head. Yeah. If you're thinking about anything else other than what's going on right in front of you, you will lose quickly. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because, you know, in the moment, your only concern has to be not even just the guy in your back, but, uh uh-oh, his arms around my neck, defend the neck. It doesn't matter if he sweeps me. It doesn't matter if he moves me somewhere. It doesn't matter if he attacks the arm. My neck is in danger right now. Right. You have to be be really in the moment. You know, we've talked about this, too. Psychologists call it a flow state. Mm -hmm. It's like the state that, you know, like a free climber might be in when he's climbing climbing up a, a mountain. You know, you know, free climbers don't use any ropes or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So, you know, if they if they mess up, they might die. So they have to be completely in the moment. There can't be anything else going on in their head other than what is my next, you know, handhold or what's my next foothold. Um, and it's the same thing with jujitsu. I mean, you're not obviously, you know, if you mess up in jujitsu, you're not going to fall off of a mountain. But um, you know, it, it's the same idea where you have to be totally focused on the moment or you will probably lose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you can't, you know, you have to literally confront the problem in front of you. Right. Yep. And by doing that, all other problems mean nothing. Yeah. Like there, there is nothing there. Yeah. And I love it. And, and, you know, to get back to the point you were saying before about, um, you know, uh, the society we're in today, it's very comfortable. You know, we don't like, we don't like when we get uncomfortable. And to me, there's also something very primal about jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just two guys, mm-hmm. bring what you have. Yep. And do what you can. Oh, yeah. So it's, there's no, there's no, like, um, you can't fake it in jujitsu and be good. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also very humbling. Yes. So, like, that's one yeah. thing, like, I love about it. Like, to me, yes, it is very traditionally masculine. Like, some people in the modern era might call it, you know, almost toxic masculinity because, you know, oh, you're fighting other people. Like, oh, you're literally seeing who's best. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, but to be better. Right. And one lesson everybody learns, even if it's the worst, or not worst, but the most dangerous black belt, is that there's always a guy out there who can catch you off guard. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure even people like Gordon Ryan, who's like one of the best in the world, or, you know, Hickson Gracie, you know, Grandmaster Hickson, or no, he's not Grandmaster. Grandmaster would only be to Helio and him. But, you know, like Master Hickson and guys like that, like even they would admit, like, you know, purple belt, blue belt, even a white belt on the right day, if you don't take them seriously, if you're just like, you know, they can catch you off guard. And I know he's done it to me. He's got me in some deep guillotine chokes. Where I've had to be like, okay, stay calm, work your defense, mm-hmm. don't freak out, because it was there. Mm-hmm. Like you, you weren't cranking just right. Like you had, you didn't make the right adjustment. You know, right now there's the memes going around about micro adjustments, <laughs> which is silly. But you know, sometimes you do just gotta adjust your grip a little bit. And yeah. there's been times where you've had me deep. Yeah, and that's you know that's another thing that makes the sport so interesting to me is that if you're not hitting the te- technique correctly you won't get anywhere but when you hit it there's a certain feeling that comes along with that and you almost know you're like okay this th- I know that I'm doing this right it's right there now. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you're like mm. though I will say too one thing I've used to my own advantage and it's a great dangerous technique but a great technique is if you can keep control of yourself. Again, one of the things I love about jiu-jitsu is it forces you to learn to be uncomfortable and to stay in control of your emotions, your body, your breath. And there's been times where people have caught me in deep chokes. Um, our coach, Bo, recently caught me in one. And he pointed out, he's like, dude, if you didn't gurgle, I was, I was ready to let go. Mm. I figured. <laughs> but, but I needed to breathe. Like, I couldn't wait any longer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've done that. You know, I've had been situations where people have a move, but it's not causing damage. Again, yeah. like, like a wind choke. It's not going to cause damage. Triangle choke. It's not going to cause damage in theory. I mean, some evidence, you know, I mean, you're cutting blood flow off to the brain. So, eh, not great for you, but um, comparatively, not like, like an arm bar or a Kimura or like some type of lock that's just going to blow tendons out. Heel hook. Um, so there's times where, you know, again, you just have to... Again, to use the colloquial term, man up. But you right. just got to stay calm, stay focused, and just 
don't give up. Yeah, and you know, if, if, if back to your point about humility, because you know the reading today at mass, you know, was about um, uh, you know Adam and Eve in, mm-hmm. in, the, in the garden, and uh, this idea of pride and humility, and you know Adam and Eve were given everything; they were basically told not to do one thing, but their pride got in the way. Yeah, and uh, they did it, and it caused the, you know their downfall. And um, it's it's sort of the same thing with uh, with jujitsu is that if you're in a position and you think oh I can I can go for this move mm-hmm. and you don't really consider it enough if you're not uh, humble enough to maybe to admit that you can't get to that mm-hmm. and you try to go for it you'll you could lose the match yeah you know it, it'll you know it'll at least be a mistake on your part um, but you know that that whole thing with humility is such a cool part of the sport for me too and I, I've told you this before I feel like I've never played a sport where I've started where I've been this bad at the start and you know I don't know how it is at other gyms but you know we only have a few guys mm-hmm. and uh, I'm the newest one there and you're, you're just you're just constantly humiliated uh, you know if you think you know anything you, you you're just constantly tapped mm-hmm. and but that's that's part of the fun of it it's like yeah you know you know you get you get put in your place and you you kind of where you you know where you are in the pecking order Yep. You know, and that's that that's very cool to me. And another thing with that is too, like I know a lot of guys, again, like I mentioned here, like I, I purposely have been trying to feed Will stuff in some of our rules. And a lot of guys at a lot of gyms will do that. Like, you know, a blue belt rolling with a white belt, especially a new white belt, yeah, he's gonna be defensive so he doesn't get hurt. Because, you know, white belts, even blue belts, let's not lie, we're spazzy. We move weird, mm-hmm. we move ways we shouldn't move. Again, I blew out an ankle doing that. Just in the past 12 months, um, luckily it healed, um, but, you know, people move weird. Um, But at the same time, most guys, they might sub you once or twice, but then they'll they'll let you work. Right, yeah. Um, You know, I know that even with, again, like my coach, Bo, you know, he uses ruling with us, and he'll rule every day unless he's injured, um, as a chance to work on stuff he's having trouble hitting, you know. Um, but also forcing us to work on stuff we just drilled. And we might have done like a quasi-live with where we'll do live training but positional. So like if we drill, which is a great thing to do, um, especially for new guys. Like what Will's doing here with, you know, a brand new white belt rolling, like just straight up rolls, yeah, that, that can destroy self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of places don't do that. Um, well, I started at zero as it was, and then right. it hasn't gone up from there. Well, it better. <laughs> But uh, I would say, you know, too, like with that, though, um, positional drilling, like truly going for stuff, truly trying to resist, but like with set parameters, like we did um, a little while ago where you start from guard and the guy wins bottom, the guy who has guard wins by sweeping or submitting, top guy wins by submitting or escaping. Mm-hmm. So like you either pass guard or get out of guard or you get a sub from guard, which is, I mean, rare, Yeah, you know. But stuff like that, or even just like start standing. Like if you just if you get know the guy only knows takedowns, go live, but to the takedown only. Right. Um, force him to use against a resisting opponent what he knows, and that's one of the things I love with any type of submission grappling, whether it's catch can wrestling, whether it's jiu-jitsu, whether it's judo, sambo, whatever. Is that if you're doing it safely? With concern for your partner, if you respect the tap, you can go full out. Right. Almost every day. There has to kind of be a mutual agreement between the guys. Like, okay, you know, we're we're gonna try to to win, but it's we're not gonna try to destroy the other guy. Right. And again, that's where like ruling, like seventy percent comes in, mm-hmm. or sixty percent. Yeah. Um, or even doing you know what often is called sloth rules. So like where you do it almost as a warm up, but you you purposely are going like you know, 10, 15% power and speed just to get the body moving, try some stuff out. Um, and, and learning, you know, more about, you know, that I think that would help learn about the choices that you're making as you're rolling, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you're going fast, sometimes you don't even, you don't even, you don't even consciously choose what to do next. It's sort of like, you know, you, you just grab for something or, you know, whatever. Yep. But, you know, when you, when you roll like that, and I know we've done that once before, it, it makes starts to make you think about your choices. Mm-hmm. Like what what choice am I making here? You know? Yep. Yeah, it's definitely good. Again, now again with jujitsu, a lot of it is 
again, just a blue belt. I can't speak for everybody, but I know from talking to black belt stuff like that, a lot of it is developing your own game, developing your own reflexes so that, you know, if somebody grabs your foot, you're like, yeah, no. Yeah, you know what to do. It's not even, it's not even, you don't even think about it. You just kind of know what to do. Right. You know? Recognition of that danger and recognizing how to get out of that danger um, is key because even in a normal street fight, you know, you, you want to know what you're doing. Like, that's one thing I like. Uh, there's a book by Jack Dempsey, um, former heavyweight champ, who just destroyed people. And I love what he points out. He's like, look, most people in a street fight don't get seriously injured by the other guy. They get seriously injured by the stuff they hit mm-hmm. when they fall. It's like, so control the situation. And, and I think even to do anything like that, learning how to recognize danger. So like Dempsey says, like, you know, like if you're going to get into a street fight and it's in the middle of a movie theater, the odds of cracking your skull on a chair is pretty high. Mm-hmm. So go with the guy into going outside. At least be aware of the danger. Right. And I think jujitsu teaches you that with the body. Like, yeah, oh, I know. there's yeah. an arm around my neck. That's not good for me right now. Yeah, you, you learn that pretty quickly of like, okay, this is a really bad spot to be in right now. And yeah. Then you learn, you know, for the next time it teaches you, okay, what, what did I do to get into that spot? And how can I avoid that, you know? Yep. So you're constantly, you know, uh, I feel like the learning curve when you start is extremely steep. So, mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're just constantly, oh, constantly it's, learning. It's always you know? extremely yeah, steep. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, like I, I know... Black belt, so like we're talking about it today. There's a place I won't say the name of the gym, so that again, COVID. Um, but they do pro practice where people who are purple belt or higher or actual pro, not amateur, pro fighters, MMA fighters, and stuff like that, they show up and they and they, they spar with each other just because, again, that learning curve is always excessive. There's always a guy who does something better, smoother, quicker, yep. cleaner, who has a weird way of moving you never thought of that you want to steal, right. Again, like that Kimura from uh, North South, you know, T learned that down in Brazil when a guy hit it on him. Uh, I think he said a brown belt hit it on him. He's like, oh, that's brilliant. And as will happen with a lot of times in jiu-jitsu is you share knowledge. So, like, after something's hit, like, you just go up to the guy and like, dude, that was awesome. How? What's the setup for that? Mm-hmm. Right. And he might charge you for a private. <laughs> he might. But most people who happily teach especially if they know like you're leaving the country like you're not going to be a competitor against them against them yeah yeah. you know but yeah so again i i think the trick is awesome i love it teaches you self-control again teaches you to be comfortable with being uncomfortable Mm -hmm. which is something i think everybody man woman adult child needs to learn Mm -hmm. um just because life is full of uncomfortable moments yeah um you know and also what you mentioned before about humility and not having an ego about it, you know, you you can't uh, be upset about getting tapped. You know, yeah, that 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 won't take you very far. You know, you have to kind of just accept it, learn from it, and then you know, go to the next one. Yeah, and that's again one of the things I I greatly love about uh, the way we do jujitsu at our place um, is because with live rolls, you know, you have your partner for five minutes. So whether you get submitted zero times, you submit him zero times, or whether Somebody gets 20, 30 submissions on a guy. You tap, slap, and reset. Like, it's, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it's a cool thing at the end because, you know, you spend five minutes going at one another, you know, trying to make, trying to choke the other guy or mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And then at the end, you know, there's a weird closeness that you have, right? Yep. You, you were just in kind of in this intense situation with this other person. Yeah. And, and that's kind of something that you'll you share after that, you know. Yeah, there's no... There's no other way to describe it. That's it. Yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. It's it's awesome. You know, it's again, it's primal, right? You know, uh, you know, you're you're training him. He's training you. You're flesh on flesh, skin on skin, pain on pain, sweat on sweat, and again, it forces you. You know, you can't have a personal space bubble, right? And right. do jujitsu. No safe spaces in jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> so. Once you get used to that, like it's it's there, like and it stays, like it's not just during sparring, but like that friendship, that lack of a personal space, that having guys you can just call up, like, dude, what's going on? Or like, it's been a rough day. I need to go get a beer. Let's go get a beer. Mm-hmm. It's there because you can open up to them. Now, obviously, different ways at times, but you right. know, it's it's an amazing camaraderie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Once you once you roll with a the guy there. You know, there's, again, there's that weird 
kind of closeness that you have with them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, overall, if you're thinking about doing it, you're getting into it, or just starting out, uh, highly recommend it. Sticking with it, it's been, it's been great, uh, great physical workout, great, uh, great for you know mental health, and you you meet great people, um, and just overall, just really cool experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's grab your phone, could we bring it? Um, but yeah, definitely, like Bill said, um, if you're thinking about it, it's a great experience. Um, obviously, there, there's some gyms out there that are going to be a little different. Um, you know, I have the advantage that, again, the gym I go to, the gym Will's at, um, there's no one in there that needs an enforcer talk to. There, the, you know, everybody's a great guy. Um, not all places are exactly like that, but definitely, I'd say the vast majority are. Mm -hmm. That they're great places to train. They will help you. They will push you. You know, they, they won't let you whine and quit, nor should they. Right. Because, again, you're going to have bosses, you're going to have jobs that are like that, where you can't just quit or you starve to death. Right. It's about it's about being uncomfortable. So, you know, when you come up against those uncomfortable positions in, in daily life, it's like, oh, this is nothing. I was just, you know, I could, you know, yesterday I could barely breathe. And yep. This, this little tiff I have with my boss is nothing, you know. Yeah. And even for, like, any students, any kids, it, it gives you that break. Like it sh lets you shut your brain off and focus solely on what's in front of you. You don't, you can't worry about AP. You can't worry about college admissions. You can't worry about, again, those evil monks who gave you an ASC writing assignment <laughs> from uh, the place down under. And no, I don't that, mean Australia. That is torture. That's serious torture. Oh, it's, it's brutal. <laughs> like I, 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 well, you know how I describe it. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say those words and anything the kids are able to see. Um, as per my department chair's orders. Maybe, maybe we can save that for next video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hopefully um, you guys like this. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a longer video, obviously. Um, but I think it is kind of cool. Um, obviously, if you guys like this, we're happy to do this You know, more often than not. Um, I will say right now, like you can tell, our green screen setup is not great. Um, we're running this stream uh, slash recording off a laptop. It's pushed to its max yeah um i do i did spend some uh christmas gift money that i was given from some wonderful parishioners at the parish i go um to buy a wonderful video editing rig um which should be coming in so hopefully we can actually do these videos and it'll be a lot better uh the green screen won't be all wacky and half phased in and out um but yeah if you guys like this i, I i'm game to make more i'm sure will's more for this, um, maybe even we'll just do more random things like play a couple of video games on stream or something like that for the kids. Absolutely. Because, um, again, the whole point of this Cracks in the Cloister is to just show that monks and priests and all that, that we're, you know, we're normal people. Mm -hmm. We're human. We're guys. We do the same stuff you guys do. Only maybe, better. No, only better. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we're all trying to be better Christians, better, you know, we're trying to get to heaven, but... We're not all born that way. Mm -hmm. So life, like with jiu-jitsu, learning to be a good person is learning. It's a process. It's hard work. It's learning to be uncomfortable. It takes humility. Exactly. Yep. So hopefully this recorded all right. And uh, with that, I think we should sign off. Yeah. Cool. Cool, guys. Have Peace. a good one. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment because that definitely helps the uh, algorithm. And, you know, father and uh, brother here, you know, we need some of that side hustle. <laughs> if uh yeah if the big tech doesn't uh, come down on us for this or something oh i'm sure they will <laughs> all right take care guys god bless all right